Hey, it's Kevin from JJ Hat Center. Uh, let's play a little guitar today. We'll start off this uh, little wah wah pedal here. hats and guitars. Okay. <clears throat> what is your biggest hat question when you walk into a hat store usually? Generally, my number one question I get asked is, what is good for my face? Um, the very difficult question. When somebody walks in, there's a new employee there, you know, he's only worked here for a day or two. That could be really nerve-wracking. Find me the hat that goes really well with this face face now it's it's tough so you gotta, you gotta relax and you gotta show the guy that you know you got everything under control and you're relaxed so you know usually we look at your size first talk about brim size you know everybody's got their own technique that's my thing certain guys just grab a hat and put it on guy I feel like it's always good to break down the whole process for somebody when you're buying a hat um, there's just so many factors, and it's good for you to have somebody to break these things down to you. Um, the two biggest factors for buying a hat is, is it made out of fur felt or is it made out of wool felt? There's two kinds of felt hats, okay? Better hats are made out of fur felt. Uh, it's basically made from animal fur. It's not like a, uh, like a skin. It's not like a fur coat. It's very different from that. If you buy a fur coat or something, it's basically the skin, the fur, and everything is just, you know. But this is different. It's more kind of like just the hair of the rabbit. You know, they shave the hair part off and just use the hair, chop it up, compress it into felt. So you're not using like, you know, the pelt or like the leather or the skin. It's more like the hair. You're using animal hair, chopped up. These are animals like rabbit and beaver that have a very high oil content in their, um, in their hair. And uh, the oil is what repels the water. So it has a natural water repellency, plus they add other stuff to waterproof it too. Um, some hats are pretty strong. There's all different ways, but you know, basically they're using stuff uh, that doesn't shrink in the rain and the snow. That's why they use fur. So two different categories, fur felt and wool felt. Wool felt is used generally to keep the price down. It's cheaper. Uh, sheep, cheaper to shave a, a sheep than to shave a little rabbit and a beaver. I guess you gotta chase those rabbits through the grass with a Norelco shaver. It's like really tough and like the shaving cream gets, it gets messy. But the sheep, they just you know, give them a bowl of sheep chow and they just line up and you shave them. They're real happy to get shaved, you know? They actually have barber shops where you know the little beavers walk in. They read newspapers and like GQ magazine and stuff, Field and Stream. Just sit there and they get shaved and they like hot towel and stuff. It's real old timey, but yeah, you've got two different categories: fur felt and wool felt hats. Now, not everybody can afford a fur felt hat. I totally get that. Um, fur felt is expensive. Um, a fur felt hat, like you know, a major brand like Stetson, Dobbs, Knox. Uh, whatever, any of those big hat names, they're gonna cost, you're looking at at least like 150 bucks, maybe more like 175 or 200 for a good fur felt American made hat. 
like the real deal. Now, there are hats made of wool felt that are really good. Some people feel they're not quite as like, cool, they're not quite as uh, authentic or something, but they are. They're, they're simply hats that have modern technology in them and they keep the price down. Um, there's something called light felt and light felt hats roll up. You can put them in your pocket. They're crushable and rollable. So that's a big advantage over the fur felt size. So you got these waterproof fur felt hats and you got water repellent, uh, what do you call it? Uh, wool felt hats that are also gonna keep the rain off but for less amount of years. For not like 30 years, maybe it's gonna be 15 or 10 years or something. Less longevity, that's the deal. They both will keep the rain off you. You're just not gonna get 30, 50, you know, crazy amount of decades out of wool felt hats if you're wearing them in the rain. Now, if you don't wear your hats in the rain, it's not even like an issue. Your hats can last you almost indefinitely. I do have old timers who walk in with light felt hats from the 90s and 80s and stuff, and they still look pretty new. Um, I hate to say it, but like the old timers seem to take care of their hats, and the young kids, are, they don't. Um, young guys would be like, oh, I brought it to Burning Man, and, uh, and, and Jeffrey Jr. was sleeping on it all the way home from Burning Man. He spilled some beans and a can of beer on it. And, you know, they just go through their hats really fast. Where people who know how to take care of their stuff, their hats last a long time. So when somebody asks me, how long do these usually last? The, the answer is like impossible. It's like how long do your shoes last? If you wear it once a week, it's not gonna last you the same as if you wear it once a day. So, you know, it's like seven times, you know, seven years versus one year, it's got a complete difference. So basically, um, some people are really rough on their hats, some people are really good to their hats. If you're rough on your hats, you're gonna mess up a fur felt or a wool felt hat. You, they're both gonna get screwed up. If you're good to your hats, both of those kind of hats are gonna look good at the end of the season. It's just that simple. Um, how do I take care of my hats? It's really easy. First of all, don't put them flat on the brim. Turn them upside down on the table, always, wet or dry. Upside down is good, hung up is good. Upside down or in the box, upside down is also great. Um, hanging it is good. Make sure you flip the brim to the up position if you do it and you don't grab it by the pinch when you take it off. Grab it by the brim. Now, also keep your hats away from heat, especially when they're wet. If your hat is wet, crack the window. If your house is hot, just heat, steam heat from your house being hot. That's gonna shrink the leather band or shrink the wool felt. Crack the window if your house is wet, if your house is hot, or just keep it in a cool place, the, the basement, whatever. Um, that's a really weird sound, isn't it? Let's play a little. Too cheesy. I better stop. 
Um, taking care of your hats is just not a big deal. Keep them away from heat and keep them upside down. That's all you gotta do. Now, two kinds of hats, fur felt and wool felt. Which do I want? Okay, um, fur felt is more expensive. It usually looks better, more authentic, cooler options, more detail. Not always, but usually. It's more expensive. It's gonna last you a little longer in most cases, not in every case. Uh, wool felt, let's, for example, wool light felt, crushable wool light felt is gonna be cheaper, a lot cheaper, sometimes half the price, like, you know, 110 versus 220 or something. So you get two light, light felt hats, wool, wool hats, for the price of one fur felt. Okay, that's a big thing. Um, you can have your one gray hat, or you can have two different hats for the same price that you can roll up and put in your pocket. That's like a big, big thing. Let's say you're going out to dinner. Um, Okay, not everybody out there is married. Let's say you've got a date, okay? I remember when I used to go out on dates, I'd be really self-conscious, like, you know, I gotta dress okay, make sure I don't do anything stupid. You'd get to a table and like, oh, I can't bring a hat to a date. What, I mean, what am I gonna do when I get to the table? I'm gonna put it on the chair or something? I'm gonna look like an idiot, just leave the hat on. And then you're like, well, um, how am I gonna take my hat on vacation? Man, I really wanna keep the sun off me and stuff, but how am I gonna pack it? How am I gonna get it on the plane? Uh, you know what, forget it, I'm not even gonna take it. So I'll just, whatever, I'll just buy a baseball hat there or something. So people don't take them on dates, they don't take them to dinner, they don't take them on vacations. You know, they don't take them anywhere. Um, you know, when are you gonna take them out? Are you are gonna leave it on in your backyard and that's it? So basically, crushable hats are really great. Um, once you start using a crushable hat, you don't want any other hats. You want them all to crush. And I can say that for me, just about every one of my hats crush, um, with very few exceptions. Very, very few. All my, my green hat, my blue hat, um, all those soft hats I've been showing you in, in this room, every one of those short brim ones, they all crush. The only one that doesn't crush is my big black three and three quarter inch brim one that I just got at Tri-City. That's hard as a rock, because um, it's a flat brim, which needs to be hard to keep it flat so it doesn't sag. So I love crushable hats. Um, I like the fact that it, I can toss them around a little. It's good for my lifestyle. I can put it in my gig bag. I can put it in my backpack. When I get on the train, I can roll it up and just stick it in my bag instead of holding it on my knee for the whole ride. That's another ridiculous thing, you know. So crushable hats, those light felt hats for 110 are way, way cooler sometimes than a $220 hat that looks really, you know, oh, this looks more authentic with the raw edge and the, the cool ribbon. Some people, they go straight for the flash. They want the hat to look expensive. But just because a hat has a welted edge and says light felt inside, you know, you may be used to these $100 hats and you want something better. You want to progress to the next level. It's not always better to get, you know, a hat that costs twice as much. Sometimes light felts are cool. If you have a really rough lifestyle and you need your stuff to roll up, Cool. Maybe it's important for you to take your hats to your job and you're a jazz musician. You've got to put it in your gig bag. Those two light felt hats, the, the, the short brim pork pie and the big gray brim gangster hat, they're going to give you two looks for your gigs. They're going to be cheap. They're going to take a good licking. They'll take rain. It's fantastic. Where a fur felt hat won't roll up, um, there's no guarantee that you know people are going to be able to wear that hat in the rain and it'll be fantastic. Now remember, fur felt is rainproof, yes, but there's no guarantee that it's gonna keep its shape. That's what you worry about, is hats getting out of shape and all wavy. You know, it'll keep the rain out, yeah, but it'll still get you know, floppy. So think about that. Um, think about what hat is just better for you in this situation. Do you wanna get two cheaper light felts? One cheaper light felt, save the rest of the money for partying? That's cool. You want to get a better hat that will last you for more years? Then buy a fur felt hat and take your time and do it right. Ask the salesman, is this good stuff? Does this stuff get like really wonky in the rain? What about this raw edge? Um, have you gotten any problems with this hat? That's a great question. Remember this one. Have you guys had any problems with this hat before? It's so rare, but sometimes there's like one hat, maybe one hat in the whole shop that comes.
comes in, it's like, ah, uh, the ice steam that hat up, it's like pretty bad felt. Did you notice? Most hats are, are good, but occasionally we get some just yucky felt. It's just bad. So just uh, if you're spending a whole bunch of money, take your time. Don't just, oh man, I love this. It's got a good name. I know that name. I want it. Boom. I got it. Make sure you're buying something good. Um, something that's right for you. Now, if you never go out in the rain, and let's say you wear your stuff indoors, then yeah, get whatever edge you want, whatever kind of felt. You don't care if it's gonna go out of shape because you're not wearing it in the rain. But everybody's got different needs from their hats. substitution. Okay. Um, you talked about, we talked about fur felt versus wool felt hats. Um, what else can we talk about? When you go into a hat shop, that's the two main categories. I'm going to say the other main categories are going to be western felt, and dress felt. The difference is western felt is thick, it's very hard, it's meant to take a beating. And let's face it, western hats are meant for riding horses, rodeoing, ranchers, cattlemen, stuff like that. Um, horses run over hats. Guys' hats fall off and, and they get stomped on by like, you know, these huge beasts and stuff. They're meant to be very, very strong, take tons of rain. There are even cowboys who use them to water their horses and to put water in so they can drink soup at night and stuff. They're waterproof, these things. They're very thick. They're hugely tough, tough hats. A good Western felt is gonna last you a long, long, long time. You can keep reshaping it. You don't have to worry about it losing its shape, usually. Um, and fur felt westerns are what you want. You do not want a, a wool felt western. You don't have the money, you know, just buy it, whatever. But uh, fur felt is a little better. Uh, generally a 4X western, or a, they do measure quality on western hats with X's, but not dress hats, not fedoras. Um, I think they tried it years ago. They tried the X system. It just never caught on. So they only use it for cowboy hats. I got that song in my mind. That's a great progression, that chord progression. talk a little bit more about this. Western felt is tougher. Dress felt is softer. It's going to flex more and fit you much better. If you're a tall fellow and you don't have enough headroom in your hat, you're hitting the roof, a Western hat just hits the roof. Uh, uh, it stops like a wall. A dress felt flexes. So the top of the hat will move up in an arc to give you more room. So in other words, they're softer. Dress hat, dress felt and dress hats are softer and they just fit you better. They're more comfortable. They're way lighter. They can weigh like half the, the weight of a western hat. They do lose their shape easier, usually in rain and snow, but mm, they don't always fail. Sometimes they're fine, like 100%. But, you know, thicker, harder felt is going to do better. So you buy westerns because they're tougher. They don't even lose their shape in the rain. Like, you could just have tons of snow just piling up on your hat, just totally white, shake it off, you get home, it'll be fine, you know? But a dress hat, yeah, it's not gonna survive that without losing its shape somewhat. It's just physics, it's soft, it's floppy. It's gonna dry a little fun. Okay, um, next, what are the advantages of dress felts? I'm gonna say it's much better for the everyday use, you know, it's 
lighter. It doesn't weigh a lot. It's better, you know, a lot of smaller people, ladies who just don't want heavy things on their head. Um, they're big brims. You tend to like bump into walls and like doorways and stuff and boxes when you have these big hard rims on. A short brim, you, you could lean back in your chair in the subway and it just bends. Where a hard brim, it just hits the wall. You can't sit down in a hard. So yeah, there's a lot of advantages. You know, um, I wear dress hats. I don't wear Western hats much. Uh, actually, just got my first Western felt this year in like 10, 20 years or something. I don't do them usually because I love a soft hat. I love a crushable hat that's soft and very, very high quality. Like uh, hats from Spain and Italy that are you know, really good, good felt. Um, I like a classic hat, classic dress hat shape, but in like a funky color. That's sort of like my, my thing. I like that, you know, like a lavender or a green or a royal blue classic hat. Um, but you know, people's tastes change, they evolve. You start off with one hat and you get bolder, bolder, bolder. Your, your tastes evolve. Um, I see it all the time. People get their first hat and then they get bolder and they start getting into caps and bigger brims. They try short brims, wide brims, and they expand. Um, you get more confident. You look in the mirror and you see yourself with a hat. It doesn't look shocking, it looks good. Uh, sometimes it takes 10 minutes for a person to get used to their image. When they look in the mirror the first time, they're like, uh oh, that looks weird. And then I come back to them 10, 15 minutes later, and they're like standing taller and they're owning it. You know, they're just getting into the hat. And you can tell this guy is, he's got it now. He likes it. Um, it's all in the body image. If you see a person cowering, like, what do you think of this? He doesn't like it. You can tell he, he hates the hat, you know. But if he's like, yo, you know, this looks good, and he doesn't take the hat off, it's on him for like 10 minutes. You know this guy is just owning it, you know? So 10 minutes, give yourself five or 10 minutes to get used to the image. Don't put on a hat, get intimidated and walk out. The other thing is if you don't want people to watch you, do it yourself and don't let people help you. Just tell them, um, I'd like to just browse for a little while. I'll give you a call when I need help. Look around. You know, or ask, can I try these two on and I'll call you when I need help. Try a big brim, try a medium brim. Work it out for yourself if you're shy. Um, come back, take a second trip, take a third trip. Tell them you're not buying today. I'm really just window shopping. I wanna buy a hat, but I'm not sure what I want. I really need to take a little time and look around. That's okay. Um, people like to hear that, you know, that I'm not buying today, but you know, it's kind of cool that way, all right, you know. You don't like show a guy 30 hats, expect to sell it to him, and then he walks out. Like, what happened? It's okay, not everybody's buying. Some people are just window shopping. That's totally cool. I think you should take as many days or trips as you want to make this hat choice count. Bring a friend in, a wife, a husband, a boyfriend, girlfriend, anybody you trust their opinion. Somebody who's got a good eye and is gonna tell it to you straight out. Um, you don't want a yes man. You want somebody who'll be like, yo, Kev, you look ridiculous. That looks so stupid. You know, you want somebody who's gonna tell you like it is. Bring that friend with you um, and weigh their opinion against the hat salesman's opinion and your opinion and boom, it'll just come together. Generally, the answer becomes obvious. You spend enough time in front of the mirror with enough hats, you'll know which one's for you. You just keep looking, trying the three different brim sizes, it will come to you. Now, we have an incredible selection at JJ's. We have it, like everything. That's the key, you gotta have a big selection. A lot of people go into a department store, there's one little tree rack of hats with like four styles on them. All four styles are wrong for them. They try them on, they don't fit, they look bad. And they figure, I'm not a hat person, I don't look good in hats. But you need a good selection, you need all the brim sizes, you need them light, you need dark, you need soft felt, hard felt, high crowns, low crowns, pork pies, center creases, floppy tweed hats, caps, everything. Um, maybe you're a cat man. Maybe you want something like, you know, a Samuel L. Jackson uh, Kangol cap or like a Babe Ruth uh, newsboy, like John Lennon or something. Or the guy from ACDC has that little newsboy cap or something. Maybe, you know, you're that kind of a guy or something, but you'll never know unless you go to a place with a big selection. So, yeah, take a trip out to JJ Hat Center, 310 Fifth Avenue in Manhattan. We'll show you the real deal. I'll try every hat in the shop on you if you want. Um,
All right, running out of time. We're at the 25 minute mark. So let's do a little Kevin from that old Jay. 